turkey shoot. Guam in the Marianas. Guam in the late 1930s. Guam in the twilight of peace. A languorous island where native Chamorros pursue their placid age-old ways. This is United States territory in the far Pacific. Heritage of the 1898 war with Spain. Half forgotten stepchild among America's overseas possessions. Under the guardianship of the United States Navy, life has remained serene, unruffled. But the pattern of history is changing, and naval authorities on Guam plead in vain with Congress to fortify the strategic island while time remains. Peace is but a mask behind which lurks the ugly face of war. Already Japanese bayonets cast lengthening shadows on Guam and on its people. American garrison on Guam. Only a few hundred Marines. A fact duly noted 1,600 miles to the north in Tokyo, where the warlords of Japan convene to plot the means by which they will hammer out the greater East Asia co-prosperity sphere to the greater glory of the emperor. The geographic names which the militarists weigh in their deliberations are heavy with coming history. Pearl Harbor and the Philippines, Borneo and Hong Kong, Malaya and Singapore. But there is another, lesser-known name to be integrated into the plan. And that name is Guam. Guam, the American pillbox without guns in the Marianas. Saipan, Tinian, Rota are Japanese. Southernmost is Guam, and Guam is doomed. no defensive weapon larger than a 30 caliber machine gun. The hopelessly outnumbered Marines face 5,000 fully equipped Japanese landing troops. December 10th, 1941. Guam is overwhelmed. is now Japanese. But the sun has set for the Chamorros, and during the long night ahead, Guam is forced to muster with Saipan and Tinian, and the three islands form a cluster of death traps across the path leading north to Japan, west to the Philippines. With every passing month of occupation, the Japanese impose increasingly harsh restrictions on Guam and its people, using every device of pressure and propaganda to integrate forever the island into their empire.
two and a half years, Guam waits, secured and beyond reach within the Japanese wall of water and steel. But in June 1944, incredibly, miraculously, powerful United States naval forces appear off the Marianas as the Allies, on the other side of the world, storm ashore at Normandy. The ebb tide has given way to the flow. Now it is the Americans who bear down on Guam in overwhelming strength. Now it is the Japanese who are doomed. Ships of the United States 5th Fleet have brought 100,000 troops and a quarter million sailors to the Marianas. Saipan is the first target. Saipan, headquarters of Japan's Central Pacific Fleet, commanded by Admiral Nagumo, the same Nagumo who smashed Pearl Harbor. Saipan, whose loss rings from the Emperor's supreme naval advisor the anguished cry, Hell is upon us. Assault troops inch forward against suicidal Japanese resistance. 
and while soldiers and marines struggle for each yard of earth, far to the west, many leagues seaward, another battle is shaping. A Japanese carrier force from bases in the Philippines sets out to crush the American landings. But the approach of the Japanese fleet has been spotted by American submarines, its position betrayed, its course plotted. The Japanese pilots, most of them young and inexperienced, are marked for death before they start. The Americans are waiting. The Americans are armed. The Americans are prepared. American carrier planes are brilliantly deployed to meet the oncoming Japanese. The ensuing battle is a slaughter, a rout, a turkey shoot. single day's bag of the air war anywhere, on any front, 400 Japanese planes butchered for a loss of 26 Americans. Three carriers, two tankers are also sunk. The back of Japanese naval aviation is permanently broken in the Battle of the Philippine Sea. With the Imperial Japanese Navy beaten off, the troops under Marine General Holland Smith, commander of the 5th Amphibious Force, set their sights for the grueling conquest of the Marianas. Against the Americans, the Japanese have pitted units of their crack Manchurian army. The Japanese resist. The Japanese die. The Japanese do not surrender. Japanese fall in the battle for Guam. Last-ditch defenders are blasted from caves or commit suicide by leaping to death. Aganya, Guam's battered capital, liberated by the blood and sacrifice of young Americans. The battle is over. The mopping up goes on for months before the last Japanese soldier is ferreted from his hiding place. And the people of Guam, the Chamorros, down from the hills they come. Out of Japanese concentration camps they come. The weary and the frightened, the sick and the feeble. All are welcomed and helped by the American soldier who cheerfully abandons the savagery of battle for what is truly in his heart, in his nature. Sympathy, kindness, compassion.
the ordeal of survival is over. The shadow of perpetual fear is gone. The nightmare of battle has ended. Peace has come again to Guam, to the Marianas, and arising from the ashes, new life. Shamoros. All through the Japanese occupation, their loyalty never wavered. They knew the Americans would come back one day. The Americans have come. The day has come. its gratitude does not forget. Liberty has its price, freedom its cost. But the work of war must still be done on Guam. Deep inside the boundaries of the Japanese Empire, 1,000 miles forward from the last conquered base in any we talk, Naval construction battalions, the sea bees, with marine and army engineers, take over from those whose job it was to destroy. Destruction gives way to construction, as fruits of American industry and the know-how of her men transform tropical Guam into a generator for victory in the Pacific. fitted for the staggering traffic of cargo and equipment that comes surging in, transforming the island into the most potent advance base anywhere in the world. Guam becomes the Pacific supermarket, where the tools of war are stocked. Thank you. 
Admiral Nimitz directs the naval strategy for the final phase of war in the Far East. Pearl Harbor, the traditional headquarters of the United States Pacific Fleet, is now a remote rear area. But Nimitz's new base is equidistant from two major Allied objectives. Tokyo, 1,600 miles north. Manila, 1,500 miles west. Everything needed to conquer the one and liberate the other has been furnished in abundance and overabundance and superabundance by workers and factories 10,000 miles back across the vast reaches of the Pacific in continental United States. But here it all is. Detroit is here, and Birmingham is here, Pittsburgh is here, and so is Seattle. The wealth of American skill and American labor is stored and stacked and ready here on Guam, here in the Marianas. against Japanese sea communications and for long-range air attacks against Japan itself. That is what Nimitz's strategic directive called for in the Marianas. On Guam, on Saipan, on Tinian, the bases have been established. The mission has been accomplished. Now the B-29s take off. Take off for Tokyo. Take off for victory.